EcoForce. You know what? You love it. Are you buying safe? Are you equin? Or are you forcing up? Are you buying? Are you buying in? You're going in. I would like to start this off, if you don't mind. Go ahead. I'm playing it safe. And I'm saying that the bubble is bursting. This was going to be a little bit of a sad segment. Heart. Heart It's topic. over. This has been an idea for a long time, right? Is that the bubble is bursting, right? Esports is not generating a lot of money from like what they do. But what you have to understand is that a lot of the money is built off of what it can do in the future. They have huge crowds. They have um, these huge games. A lot of people want to watch it, but I think it's at a point right now that it's not sustainable. And I think right now, as we're going into this economic downturn, it's it's tough. And so we saw things like the guard dropping a lot of its roster, even though it was doing great things and is probably still going to franchise as a very, very like high up uh, qualifier for that. It, they dropped half the roster. 100 Thieves layoffs, uh, TSM layoffs, layoffs everywhere. It's just the same with like uh, Beyond the Summit, Beyond the Summit shutdown. Ugh. These are great people doing great things, but it's still just not enough because there's not enough revenue in the scene. Now, that really hurts the top end, it hurts the bottom end, it hurts guys like us because we don't get the opportunities, right, to go out there and do stuff on the big stage. Um, it hurts the big guys because they can't, you know, perform with the same safety and security that they always have been to perform at the top level. So it's going to be tough, but we can work through it. I think there's been times when the bubble has bursted and it just starts coming back up again later, right? As long as there's passion in the scene, as long as there's people that care, then the scene's not dead. So and we're not going anywhere. Yeah, again, I think people are going to miss the street. Esports is not going to die. This is going to take a much different route as um, it's going to be more corporate-like, but in the same time, you're still going to have those uh, little sparks of like how esports is going to be but the bursting of the bubble is needed all these games are going more franchising route you see now valorant's going to the more franchise route cs is kind of already basically franchised already league overwatch all these big tier one esports are all going uh, franchising and unfortunately the reality of it they're needed to sustain money they can't just keep having open brackets like we did for the past two years in valorant it's needed and i would have to unfortunately i would have to agree with you it is an eco the bubble is unfortunately going to burst i don't know maybe right now but it's going to very very soon yeah just slowly trickling down but we'll see yeah. We'll see where it goes. Uh, my eco, this Please was subscribe. actually announced today, funny enough. TikTok is now making limits. If you are under the age of 18, you cannot be on TikTok for more than 60 minutes. And if you are, you have to put a code in by a parent to let you in. Now, I what I'm saying eco is, is for the content creator perspective, as now it's going to uh, uh, force them to make long form content, which in my opinion, makes your t uh, makes your uh makes your channel and makes you so it's gonna be interesting you're gonna see a lot of more tiktokers trying to transition into more youtube because uh and then really cr move the creative side so uh i'm actually for this in my opinion because i want the content creators to i want valorant scene to flourish because i feel like we've been riding on the shorts and the little content for a while and i feel like now we need to start branching out to long form content i agree i think that uh have you ever seen this would be a weird thing i heard the show's called the d'amelio family show have you seen that nope. it's just like the D dixie d'amelio charlie d'amelio whatever the tiktok stars but it's just they're just living and it's very uneventful but i think if you put five gamers in a house right and it's just like the nrg guys and no rules what happens right it's probably a lot of degenerate stuff goes down by that i mean sitting and playing video games for 15 hours a day that could be content that could be content uh it, it's good it's gonna be good content good long form content yeah, yeah yeah and then like also just more creative like uh documentaries like me i'm i'm a big sucker for uh, video essays i love watching video essays so like if we can have more video essays of like the esports scene and maybe live valorant or just like you just talking about what's going on in, for example lock in tournament what do you think about the a situation just you talking about that just always is a good watch but uh yeah i'm eco on the tiktok 60 minute thing hell yeah and i'm i got a four we've been eco we've been playing it safe all day i'm buying in i'm going pro galaxy in wii sports tennis because today it was announced by the official olympic committee that <laughs> the official olympic esports series game lineup by the official at olympics on twitter archery baseball chess cycling dance motorsport sailing tennis taekwondo now you may think to yourself what games what professional games are there there's motorsport that's one chess where the what tennis game are they playing? Which means they have to be playing Wii Tennis. And if you don't know, I'm, I'm a bit of a, a bit of a master on the sticks. I'm, I'm always hitting those timings, the power shots. So I got, I got to start training because I got to make it to the Olympics. I could be, you could, have, we could have an Olympian on the podcast. Oh my god, I don't know what that be. Uh, then um, if we want, serious, 
we can have record the episode at the Olympics before your po- uh, before your match. We so can have true, like a yeah. post and, and pre-game interview. Oh my god. I'm like, I kind of want to get into this now. I've played a lot of here. Mario Tennis. Do you think that's in the equation? If anything, if it's Mario Tennis, I think we might have to go doubles. We might just go doubles in the Olympics. Mario Tennis, I'm a bit of a Donkey Kong king. Oh, punching the ball. I'm more of a I'm more of a Luigi kind of guy when it comes to Mario Kart, Damn. Mario Kart, and uh, that, uh, everything. I'm more of a Luigi kind of guy. But uh, yeah, it, I would love it. I think I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of nasty at bowling. I don't know what to say, but bowling is uh, bowling's my thing, and I think I might go that. I wasn't really big of a dance guy, and I I still can't dance. But uh, it's gonna be interesting to see. And why is chess an esport? I feel like it'd be more intense if it was in person. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I feel like that kind of ruins it. I don't know. I don't really know the format for this Olympics. I think they're going to get a ton of backlash. I don't know if they're going to change the game lineup, though, because it's a bunch of old white dudes. But yeah, in all seriousness, this is an awful lineup. Um, They very clearly didn't consult anybody anywhere. It's going to be interesting to see what field they get and what sort of qualifies someone to be an Olympiad. And unironically, I would love to try to figure out if I could be an Olympiad for a random game. I was number one. Actually, I wasn't number one. I was like number... I was like top 25 in a... Minecraft won in the chamber at one point, so I clearly have the uh, the top end talent to, to produce it again. <laughs> so you have <laughs> you have past experience. Yeah, I got I got that championship pedigree on my shoulders. <laughs> Do you even know a beef chisel? <laughs> no, is that he was that you back then? That's for a, that's for a different that's a story for a different time. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, um, it's gonna be interesting to see. My thing, my force, is we're going to take it back to the uh, Valorant lock-in. I have DRX winning the event. Now, everyone's counting them up. Oh, you know, EMEA is super strong. Oh, loud, they're on home grounds. They're going to win. No one's talking about DRX winning, and I'm all, I'm all in. For the past year, for the past two years, really, they have barely made it past the top four. This is the event, and this is the time to do it. They overcame yay and cloud nine they overcame all the obstacles they needed loud is the is the final boss if they are able to defeat loud i feel like they have a chance to defeat e against either navi or Fnatic. i feel like this is the tournament where they can actually go in and they are actually able to win a tournament finally so that is my force um i said leviathan would win and they got absolutely destroyed by navi but ignore that ignore that drx uh i'm I'm on the drx train right now i kind of have to agree with you maybe not agree with you but i think that all four of these teams have the chops to win if they haven't won already then they have been in the position or the precipice to win um man it's just so tough especially because loud loud's been looking really good loud clean sweeped everybody navi clean sweeped everybody drx dropped three maps a map every single time they've played they've looked really really good but they have you know haven't had that same consistency fanatic clean sweeped everybody so it's it's definitely tough but i think that drx has the, the that championship pedigree that i was talking about in my minecraft one in the chamber so i have to believe that they can do it right they're just like me for real. For real. I, I think honestly, okay. if you if you start going there now, I think you might be as their six man. Maybe you might have like one map in you. Or maybe just like a half stacks, a, half stacks around. move out of the way. Sa- oh yeah. Get me in there. I feel like because uh, we already have a championship pedigree over here, like I feel like they could use that right now. 